lights. Did you miss me? I miss you. Yes. Yes. Thanks for nobody bitching about taking the week off. Um, doing the work of the Lord. Um, what? What are? What? Are, oh, what? God. What? A, an oh, act yeah. of contrition. If you're Catholic. Um, visiting the elderly. Let's put it that way. <laughs> visiting the seniors. Went and hung out with my mom and dad for a few days. Dinner. We got in the car at four thirty. We were there by ten to five. Nice. Boom. Home and in pajamas by 6.30. Nice. The Willows, my favorite Ozark bar, restaurant, hidden in the woods. Good luck finding it. But if you're ever at the Lake of the Ozarks, you don't always have to be on the lake for good food. No. Go to the Willows. I could not believe my sister-in-law, who weighs 80 pounds, got the meatloaf dinner. I've, <laughs> I, I've, it's, it's like beyond Thanksgiving. It's, and she ate it all. I'm like, how, does it, how do you stay so skinny? She... Uh, but I recommend the pork steak sandwich because it's very hard to find a good grilled pork steak sandwich and theirs is the best. And they have mashed potatoes every night. Oh, nice. And Tuesday's fried chicken night. Tell Angie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell Angie the cat. Tell, tell Angie Kathleen. That, yeah. Um, so thanks for all that, Termite. So, so many things. Um, some shout-outs in the beginning. So if the shout-outs bore you, just fast forward a little bit. But yeah. there's a few because there's four cities backed up. Uh, Richmond, Charlotte, uh, Des Moines, and Kansas City. Uh, first of all, Huge shout out to Megan, who got me the K.I.V. beer. Yeah. Now, I'm going to taste it. I'm, I don't like sweet tea out of the gate. So it's a sour beer, too. It's a sour beer. So I'll probably, and then I saved the other three. And I'm going to save one for Ron, because he likes sweet tea. Oh. So, yeah, well, he kind of quit drinking, but. Uh -huh. Oh, whoa. Shoo. K.I.V. Wow. <laughs> Just look, it looks like it. I don't know how they got away with it. They kind of ripped off Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah. Kay Ivey's the governor of Alabama. If you've seen my act, you know why I, I'm obsessed with this lady. But uh, <laughs> I really just want to go drinking with her one night. I think a bottle of bourbon would open up a lot of secrets with Kay that would go, <laughs> that would just be shocking, to say the least. All right, here we go. It's a sweet tea sour ale with honey and lemon. Yes, I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so sour. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a sour beer. I, I know, but that was like, that was like drinking a whole lemon. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> There's another one in the four pack. I'll try another one next week. Okay. <laughs> wow. I have regular beer as a backup, but Megan went out of her way to do that. And it was in a birthday card, and she sent me KIV stickers. Nice. They're so fucking funny. But I'm sure somebody on a plane's going to look at that and go, why does that lady have a female <laughs> Colonel Sanders <laughs> called Kiv? They won't know it's KIV. Right. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's Chandler's Ford Brewing. They were the, they're the ones that made it. Good for them. I want, And then there's pictures. It looks like Baby Cat. If it's not Baby Cat, it looks exactly like Baby baby cat cool no it's not baby cat it just looks like baby cat so decatur alabama coming through way to go megan that's just awesome <laughs> that was from i picked it up at the post office and the girls up always always up there they're like what you got some more snow globes coming your way they know they know i'm lying when i send things out mm -hmm. and that people are lying when they send um <laughs> so richmond was a blast mm -hmm. um I love uh, the it's uh, the tobacco company. If you ever go to Richmond, and, and these are not shout outs for any other reason than I love them. Right. I don't get anything free. I don't. Nope. I just I'm saying that's why you know it's the truth because I'm not getting anything free for this stuff. Right. Um, it's a it's just the the coolest place. The food is great, uh -huh. and then the music starts about uh, I don't know nine. I Whoa. guess yeah. It's like three stories high. It's all brick. Richmond's a good little city that is a secret. I feel like so Charlotte. Charlotte's on the upswing though with the children. I love there that. are children, there are young people everywhere. I I like Max Speedway. It's a barbecue place, but there's sports on everywhere. And Mizzou was playing. So cool. Me and uh I had the beer I think I had the beer monster with me. Mm -hmm. Michael Somerville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the beer monster. So we um that it's just an upcoming city. I feel like Charlotte, nobody talks about it, but uh, it's the home at NASCAR headquarters. See, there's a little geography. Things you will learn on this Pubbles cast that um, no, there's no really reason to know these things. Um, but if you're looking for a place to move to, yeah. what I, I would recommend, R Richmond or Charlotte. Yeah, it's a, a lot of the children. If you're young, it's affordable. Uh, uh, Charlotte is super dog friendly. Cool. 
Everybody has a dog. And it's like they, it's very strange. It's like they all agreed only curly haired dogs. I know that sounds like I made that up, but every dog I saw was like a labradoodle or a schnoodle doodle or whatever the hell. Some sort of doodle. doodle, Curly haired (laughs) ones. Like it was like they had a town meeting at the Chamber of Commerce and went, okay, we're going to be the city of dogs, but only ones with perms. Okay. (laughs) Don't you bring your shaggy Irish setter bullshit in here. No, no. You take your wolf out and get it right on out of here. (laughs) No, it was, uh, it was nice to see. I mean, and it was, the weather was beautiful. Um, with shout outs to in Richmond, uh, Lisa and Sue, uh, they gave me some Bob Ross candy. It made me laugh. But then I think those, did those billionaires get that money too? Those but people probably, that stole yeah, his life, Dolly that. stickers, Petra and Bex got, uh, Tito's and oh, and the Bloody Mary mix from Richmond. Delicious, mm-hmm. delicious. And the flying squirrel clock. That's their minor league team. I'm obsessed with minor leagues. Yeah. I, t- and the flying squirrel, their, um, like logo, logo. thing. Is top notch. Nice. Yeah, I would buy all of it if I lived there. That's oh. all I would be is in flying squirrel outfits. And no one, <laughs> that's the great thing. If you walk in with a flying squirrel t shirt, uh-huh. what I don't care. Let's say you go in and you're upset about, I don't know, the cable company. Like, no one can take you that seriously if you have a, fly, a flying squirrel. No. And then the gummy bear t- keychain from Courtney, Karen, and Avery. Um, and Richmond, the show was great. Cool. It's just a great to go hold the whole thing. They have an old town where it's all cobblestone and all that stuff. Looks very historic, you know, southerny, creepy. Southerny. <laughs> creepy. Charlotte was at that Ovens Auditorium. I know that's where everyone likes to go. And it was it was it's big. Uh-huh. There's other places with a little more character, yep. I, I would say. But the crowd was phenomenal. Cool. Even Michael said it. He's like, We should have taped specials this weekend. I'm like, I just taped one. Your lazy ass needs to tape the special. <laughs> <I'm tired. laughs> yeah. I'm tired. I have a cold. Stop talking to me. <laughs> no, he's wonderful to have on the road. Um, so uh, I love that. I got a Bud Light. light uh, oh, my God. These guys, Scott and Matt, they're from L.A. Mm-hmm. And I think they're a couple. They could be friends. I don't know, or boyfriends or whatever. But they just went around town in Charlotte and asked for free things to give me. <laughs> That's brilliant. And if they are gays, then they flew from L.A. to Charlotte. Who does that? Like, that's a connecting flight, I'm sure. That's got to be a connector. Um, but if they are gays from L.A.'s, I call you Lays. Lays. You're L.A. gays. You're Lays. That's my friend Bob. <laughs> Susan and Jay flew from Florida. Um, they got me a bunch of stickers and a manatee bottle over David, longtime fan from the Funny Bone. He now lives in North Carolina. Courtney, the European hair, hair boo bears. There are a lot of bears came back, a lot of bears. And I do share because sometimes there's going to be a maximum amount and you can't believe how much the staff is like, so are you going to eat all those gummy bears? I'm like, mm, probably can't eat them all on the way home. Would you right. like a, Would you like a few bags? Uh, Sarah, and, Sarah and Craig, we got to taste this hot sauce. Um, this is, which one is it? Uh, oh, no, I don't think that's the one we're tasting. They brought the Bigfoot thing. This is Kansas City uh, hot sauce, which I'll be tasting. And uh, anyway, moving on. Um, Dottie, Bobby, Cindy, and Karen. Sounds like the Brady Bunch. Uh, they brought the lighters, the uh, super fun light. They were hilarious. They had joke names. Like this one, it says baby cat. These all had Why? jokes or, or punchlines or whatever. Um, Olivia, Olivia, Vio, Olivia, Olivia. Ding dongs and Twinkies. Yes, I got the ding dongs. Yes, open those and uh, hoping to convert you to ding dong paddles. That was the goal no. there. no. Twinkies are too squishy. I have an I have an issue with squish. I like the wagon wheels. I like the hardness of a ding dong. But the wagon wheels are great. No, I don't never did like the wagon wheels. Yeah. Ro- Rochelle and Mark, uh, cat theme friendship bracelets. Oh, I've got yeah. Christina bought El Phoenix hot sauce and Christine from Asheville. Uh uh oh, the hard cider. Nice. Yeah, lots of treats there. And Linda brought uh Sasquatch beer from uh, uh the not the uh, the Boonshine Brewery. Nice. Yeah. Fun. So, Charlotte, thumbs up. I'm just saying, if you guys need somewhere to move, Kathleen's the weather's good. Kathleen's Relocation. Kathleen's Relocation Program. Mm-hmm. You call me. I'll give you free advice, and, and it'll all be accurate, and I'm not a realtor, so it won't be skewed. <laughs> I'm having a little shot of that stone breaker because I have a cold, and my grandma would endorse this shot. That's good. Irish whiskey when you have a cold. There's no other way around it. Or when you don't have a cold. 
So Des Moines, um, but oh, this is well, this is the shot of this lady. It came to Kansas City. Benay, B E N A Y. Yeah. Because I've drank this during story time. Yeah. And I know you guys want story time back, and I would love to do it, but it's just too busy when we're touring like this. I can't. You gotta choose. I can't. The pubcast or story time. Well, in the summer, I could probably do both, mm -hmm. assuming my parents can keep keep their shit together, <laughs> and and uh, not have full on meltdown. <laughs> oh, shoo, buddy. Um, uh, she said uh, she likes the podcast. She said if someone, as someone famous said, if we couldn't laugh, we would all go insane. And then she wrote Robert Frost or Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable. And that's, uh, it's, it's got the little Irish flag and the U.S. flag. Yep. Um, delicious. Um, she owns it. I know she owns yeah. it. Yeah, okay. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so Des Moines, another secret city Good. you should think about moving to. But <laughs> as Louis Anderson would say, bring your good gloves. Now, North Carolina and Richmond, Virginia, the weather's pretty you know, easy peasy. Des Moines, it can get screeching cold. It's the coldest I've ever been in my life. One time, way back in the day, they had comedy condos when you worked at a comedy club, and all three comedians stayed in a condo together, which was, I can't even explain how those weeks went. But one time, I decided to take the trash out. I was working at the Funny Bone in Des Moines, and the big dumpster was way across the parking lot. It was like midnight. Yep. But no guy is going to do it. They'll just let the trash keep... I'm sorry to say it, but all in all, uh -huh. not all men, but there are more pig men than pig women. <laughs> the pig men. There, there's, yeah, there's some guys that were super anal about it all, but a, a, a lot were not. Okay. And so I'm like, fine, I'll take out the trash because these two lazy pigs won't do it. And I went walking across the parking lot from the condo to the dumpster was the coldest I've ever been in my life. You're no. And I, I prepared for it. I put on the right clothing. But the wind... There's just nothing to block it in Iowa. No. There's nothing. It just comes at you anyway. Corn, but corn blocks it. it's getting, Des Moines getting pretty cool. They're building cool stuff. Mm -hmm. The people are all super smart. Cool. And I, I mean, I do the joke when I'm on stage there, but if you were, at least in Missouri, I don't know about other states, we had to take these tests in grade school that were terrifying called the Iowa Basics Test. <laughs> and I knew I would do, like, I knew, I'm like, are people making decisions based on the outcome? Because I am fucked if that's true. Because right. I'm going to flunk the science, and I'm going to flunk the math. And I'm going to really do good in the history and English and hope for a balance. Yeah. But I always thought the people from Iowa were way smarter than us because they designed the test. Right. But that's also cheating. Why don't we give those Iowans a Missouri test? <laughs> See how you do there. Huh? What is the difference between a channel cat and a blue catfish? <laughs> 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 anyway. And I went to my favorite store in the whole world there, which is Ray Gun. Nice. There's one in Omaha. There's one in Kansas City. There's one in Des Moines. And I don't know if there's any more. Chicago. Sh Chicago? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, the owner there is so cool. His name's Mike. Um, but I've been going before I ever uh -huh. met Mike, just because everything in there. He said something about it, cards. Yeah, well, I might try to write Christmas cards for him, but they would be like Midwest jokes of... Why? Yeah, the my favorite. There's a postcard in there. Whoever the children are writing the stuff in the store uh -huh. are so smart, because it's so. I think people would get it outside of the Midwest, but it's especially gettable if you're from the Midwest. There's one that says, <laughs> "There's one that says Cedar Rapids," and there's a picture of like like a mom on the phone. Mm -hmm. It says, "Your mom says all your friends are moving back." <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. But yeah. that's what your mom's gonna say. Uh, Des Moines, the show, too, even Aaron was with me, Aaron Weber, uh -huh. um, the guy who gives away a sticker at the end of his show. He stays out in the lobby, and he forgot to put his identification. It's just a sticker of a picture of his face, and I'm like, why doesn't it say Aaron Weber, AaronWeber.com? He's like, I forgot, and he ordered, he ordered 5,000 of them. Oh, my God. Yeah, he'll <laughs> trade you that for uh, an email. Yeah, uh, and he's a marketing major. I'm like, Aaron, oh, no. Aaron. Mm -hmm. He's very funny, though. Super funny. He goes with me a lot, too, if the beer monster and other people are busy. Um, um, I don't know who brought these snacks. We'll get to that. But Trisha gave me Ray Gun uh, stickers. Oh, and I met a termite at Ray Gun. Fun. Leah. Yeah. yeah, she was too. I don't know. Sometimes I think people want a picture, but I, and they're too afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. They don't want to bother you. But then I also think, Maybe they don't want my picture, and I seem like an arrogant asshole going, would you like a picture with me? I don't, I just, I'm like, if you want to grab a selfie, no problem. Otherwise, have fun. Then I try to make it sound like, and then they're like, oh, yeah, they do. 
but she was adorable. She came to the show. Uh, Trisha, hot sauce. And I gave the Ray Gun children some tickets, too, because I went to the store. Uh, I wish cream liqueur came from Andrea, Carla, Shelly, Gary, Mara, Scott, Tim, Kent, and Sarah. And they brought a bunch of local beer, too. Cool. Yeah, which I share with Aaron is also... He's a mini monster. Tiny monster. He's a tiny beer monster. monster. (laughs) I would say Aaron has more discerning taste than Michael. Oh, okay. Yeah. Aaron's like, he wants a good beer. He wants it to count. Michael will drink (laughs) anything that's presented. Good good ones, bad ones. Uh He doesn't care. It's amazing to watch. (laughs) Alice and Ashley brought me my home, the home homemade termite. Oh shit. I forgot to bring it up. It is. It's in front of Anita. It's in front of a little Anita. Yeah. Let's move little Anita. Little Anita's out on the road, too, by the way. How adorable. I I don't know How where do you would you find this. That? Or they made it. They made it. How do you do that? I don't know because I wouldn't know what a termite really looked like. Do you know they can fly? Have we talked about that? They can. <laughs> I didn't know that till L.A. One time I had a shitty one bedroom in Hermosa Beach, mm-hmm. and these things were flying around. And <laughs> the upstairs neighbor, Ben, came down for a beer, and he's like, he was Swedish. He's like, what do you want to do about your termites? I'm like, what termites? He's like, these things flying around your house. What do you think they are? I'm like, it's not my house. I paid $600 rent. I don't know what the fuck they are. I'm spraying shit in the air, trying to kill them in the air. They can fly. Um, fly. Oh, Cindy bought me the fake German heiress notebook. It's blank. It's uh, perfect. It's going to be my chore notebook. Uh, pretzels and a Mothman sticker. What? My finger hurt. There's something I got a hangnail. You're asking me why I'm biting my finger because oh, of that wow. reason. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Well, sorry. There's other people that aren't even watching. Um, are these the, yeah, these are the potato chips that Mary and Joan brought in Des Moines. Sturzings. Sturzings. Let's see where it's actually made. Visit our thing. God, I got some milk in Des Moines, too, that was A+. plus. I forgot to post my review. I don't know where they're from. I guess... It says local. It say Iowa. It doesn't say? Oh, yeah, it does. Burlington, Iowa. Nice. Burlington. Um, like the Coke factory. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's Burlington, Iowa. It's the Co- Burlington Coke factory. Vermont. Oh, Vermont. Uh-huh. They're good. Good. Yeah. I give them a B plus. Okay. They're not Lay's, but they're yeah. close. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... Moving on to Kansas City, and then we're going to get right into Queen News. Um, well, Des Moines, too. Uh, there was something else. I went to a bar there. Oh, I went to Fong's Pizza. Oh, nice. Yeah, if you're ever in Des Moines that downtown, um, it's so weird because it's an Asian motif, but it's pe- pizza. Like, it just doesn't match up. But they have the greatest T-shirts that crab, are so funny. Crab Rangoon Pizza. Crab Rangoon Pizza. Yeah. I'm not going to eat that, but I did take a bite of it, and it was actually good. Really? It's not something I would think about ordering. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then I saw Aaron over there, and God knows what he ate. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I love to watch the guys just eat lunch where I'm like, wow, that's like eight of my dinners. Yeah. You thought nothing of that. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> wow. You're going to do a show now. <laughs> right. You're going to go have a big old fat bear nap and come do a show. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. So Kansas City was the Midland, and I broke. Now, my allegiance goes to, there's always fighting in Kansas City about what barbecue is the best. Yeah. My allegiance goes to Arthur Bryant's downtown, mm-hmm. just because I'm old. Yeah. Yeah, and we tweet each other. But I broke ranks a little bit and also went to Joe's, the original gas station. Oh. Now, technically, that's in Kansas. If you don't understand Kansas City, Missouri, half is in Kansas and half is in Missouri. Mm-hmm. I, as a Missouri person, would say the good stuff's on our side. Okay. <laughs> but Joe's is on the Kansas side, and that is that counts uh-huh. as a good one. The Even Travis, Donna Kelsey. Donna, Donna. So it used to, well, it still is a gas station, mm-hmm. but then they built, um, like, a restaurant in it. But, I mean, not. You stand in line and get your own food. You get your own beer, soda, whatever. And then they there's a guy that seats people, but you don't have a waiter or nothing. So mm-hmm. whatever you want to call that. Dine in, I guess. But the line um, starts when they open. When they open mm-hmm. And by 1130, they open at 11, I think. Yeah, it's around the gas station. Donna Kelsey last Thursday was there, Travis's nice. mom. Nice. And she stands in the line just like everybody else. And she says, part of the experience, I don't want to be treated special. Nice. Yeah, very nice. I yeah. Love her. 
And people get very excited to see her. Yeah, she seems like a very normal Midwest mom. I think it's his favorite clothes. Like her clothes and stuff. You're yeah. like, okay, that's straight from Chico's. I know where that came from. Because my mom has the same one except in brown. With little tiny rivet things on it. Totally. Like, Yeah. So I snuck over to Joe's too. Um, and then downtown. Okay, this is really funny. Okay. Kansas City people get offended that sometimes St. Louis people refer to Kansas City as a cow town, farm town. Okay? Right. Now, I'm not saying I've ever said that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's out there. And okay. then the Kansas City people get mad and they call us like a... They think we're just criminals and gangs and people are shooting each other all night right. long every night, which is partially true. Um, but I got up downtown to go get Starbucks and I walked out of the hotel, went half a block, turn right. There's an enormous farm in the middle of the street. There's <laughs> cows and baby donkey, all baby, baby zebras, baby everything. And by the way, some lady wrote, I don't think petting zoos. It's not a petting zoo. These are farm animals. They, they bring down on Saturday for a couple hours and yeah. they, they get fed all this food and yeah. they seem very happy. I'm not going to get into those arguments right. about what's right or wrong, but it's not a petting zoo. They no. live on a farm. Right. Their truck was over there. Mm-hmm. But I thought, wow, Kansas City. You're not doing anything to dispel the St. Louis perception. Oh, hey, I went out to get coffee and I pet a baby zebra. What? (laughs) Oh, yeah, there's baby cows. There was baby kangaroos. I didn't know if they were wallabies or what. And they have have free food for the kids to feed them. It was nice. (laughs) They had a whole street fair down there. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's Benet. She go to the stone bright, gave me this whole bottle of cinnamon, Irish whiskey, Sarah so, and Rick, um, the Bigfoot bottle opener, which I'm actually attaching to my suitcase nice. and hope the one that I take on the plane. Cause then no one can steal it. Nice. Um, Felicia, the scarf. Yep. And it's, there was so much stuff that came back in Kansas city. Um, uh, Barb retired from the air Force, gave five bottles of gentleman Jack whiskey. Oh my God. Yeah, I gave two to the staff guys. Yeah. No, three. I kept two uh-huh. because they were so excited. And one will go to Paddles. And Paddles, you can have one. Um, Great. Uh, Tanya brought a Bigfoot t-shirt and local Missouri beer. Um, Katie, Kayla, De- Derek, mini Haribo travel packets. Those are super nice. great because then I don't have to put them in bags and I don't have to. Do. Like so, Ed, bag. this is, and then we're almost done. Um, it's just a lot this week because there was a lot. So, Ed and Penny, uh-huh. they... Okay, now, my 2007 Mercury Mariner, and I could take a picture if nobody believes that's my car. It is my car, and it has duct tape all over the inside because the stuff is falling off the things. Mm-hmm. And um, Classy. Very classy. <laughs> Guess who doesn't want to steal it? Valet. Right. Guess who doesn't want to take it for a joy ride? Valet. Valet. Mm-hmm. Guess who doesn't care if it's parked outside and a tornado and hail comes and hits <laughs> Nashville or Lake of the Ozarks? Kathleen. Kathleen. <laughs> oh, is there hail damage? That'll give it more character. Just bring it on over. I don't care. Um, he ha- gave me Stevie Nicks crazy CDs that are rogue. And then one is from St. Louis in 2008. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then it's Fleetwood Mac, 1979 to 8. This is so cool, and I can play them in my Mercury. Cool. Yeah, and I have nothing. I have two CDs in my... I have Florence and the Machine uh-huh. and Jan Arden. And I love them both, but eventually yeah. you do tire of, of whomever. <laughs> Because I've listened to it a thousand times. And then for no reason at all, they throw in David Bowie. Love it. Yeah. It was in, it was in St. Louis oh, in 1990. Wow. Awesome. I've really never heard a whole concert of his. Let's dance. Put say. on your red shoes and dance with me. <laughs> all right. So that was awesome. Uh, wow. Melissa brought me a little toy beagle and some Kansas State golf ball markers, which I will, if I were to get paired up, with some Kansas people, I'll use those when I play. Nice. Otherwise, I don't know about all that. Close. Um, this made me laugh. This lady sent me a birthday card. I got so many cards I couldn't possibly go through. I would bore you guys to tears. But this one is from Jan, and there's Keith Morrison <laughs> stickers. It says, make sure to tell Keith Morrison how my smile lit up a room. <laughs> from daylight. Dark. I know, I know, I know. Dark. Yeah, and then, and then it's one of Keith, and it just says, it was going to be a great day, or was it? Oh. oh. And then there's another one where he looks all serious. He goes, oh, that pesky DNA. Oh. <laughs> I listened to a Keith. That's a good um, podcast, too, because uh, all the driving the week, over the weekend, 
Um, damn, what was it called? Uh, Nona. Who killed Nona? Murder. Murder in Apartment 12. If you're looking for a podcast, we'll put it in the schnotes. Um, and then I would like to thank, and I need this lady to give me Spanish lessons. Somebody has to teach me Spanish. Somebody. And I can't do Babbel because you have to type all the shit out on the computer. They don't tell you that. No, it's very dumb. No. Um, she said, this is, uh, Isabella. She said, thank you for doing God's work and, uh, hope to see you live. Um, she could be an unpaid intern as your Spanish word pronunciation. <laughs> She's from El Paso. And she sent me lottery tickets, and I scratched them off, Isabella, and two were winners. And I, nice. she even sent me an envelope to send them to the Texas Lottery Commission. But <laughs> great news is I'm going to Texas. <laughs> so I will collect. I won five, oh, well, $6 total. That's a good, yeah. That's a good beer. Yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're moving on now to the show. Thank you, everybody, for everything that got sent back. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. Yeah, that was all fun and Danny and... Uh, you know, <laughs> at this age, I, so a while back I went fishing with my dad before um, this summer, and I was casting, and he goes, uh, why are you casting like that? It's just me and him in a boat. And I go, like what? He goes, well, you're doing a two-handed deal there, and you don't have to. And I, I don't, I go, well, because I'm left-handed, Dad, <laughs> and this reel is on the right side. Right. And I didn't have time to flip it over. Mm -hmm. You could just flip it if you want. And I didn't have time to flip it over, so I'm just, you know, working around that. He goes, you're left-handed? Oh, my God. How? <laughs> I have known you since the day I was born. That's and, Yeah, that's, that's when there's too many kids in your family. You don't know which ones are left-handed, which ones. Oh, and this is the Night of the Living Dead uh, sauce from Kansas City. Whoa, segue. I'm going to, well, I forgot to taste it. Uh, it's from Joe's. It's from Joe's. It's so good, but it's very hot. So Only a little. Goes a very, very long Only way. Only a little. I'll taste that one next week. These are Reese's Animal Crackers, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just as a taste test. Um, I don't know. I think this is when you do Kentucky Fried Chicken and Taco Bell in the same building. Something suffers. Yeah. Animal Crackers are fine the way they are. Mm -hmm. No. They're okay, yeah. but eat, have a Reese's or have an animal cracker. Right. I don't, no. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting it off the desk. Okay. They're out there, though, if that's what you're into. Mm -hmm. I saw them. I bought them. There you go. Okay. Doing the work of the Lord. Um, Just segue. How's your cold medicine? <laughs> my cold medicine is great. Everything is working out great. I have a beer. That K Ivy thing, that is the craziest shit <laughs> I've ever tasted. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> Queen News. <laughs> Dolly Parton will perform at the halftime show for the Dallas Cowboys Thanksgiving game. <laughs> Boom. Paddles, will you see who they're playing? Thanksgiving, uh, Dallas. She's yeah. going to to promote her new CD. And her book came out of her fashion things. Um, nice. Yeah, this is going to be great because usually, now this year... The Cowboys are okay. They're not great. They're not horrible. Um, she's doing the halftime show. That's awesome. I know. It's very exciting. Oh, the Commanders. They're playing the Commanders. Lewis Black's team. Oh, oh. Okay. Well, if you're not a football fan and you're a Dolly fan, be sure to tune in to that. Nice. Um, more Queen news. Yep. Let me should make sure I didn't forget anybody this week. No. Cher's got a Stonebreaker hat on. Cher has the Stonebreaker whiskey hat on. Mm -hmm. I don't see Cher as a whiskey person. I'd have put that on Tanya. Paddles, that's your failing. No. Is Tanya still here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, what does that tell you? Well, <laughs> Tanya does stuff, but no. she's older. She's she, you know, she does her own thing. Good yeah. for her. I would, I would say my career would mimic that as far as, look, when I'm 65, I'm just going to do fun shit, and you won't really hear from me. No. No. Uh, Taylor, Bar Taylor Swift's movie... Uh, it, it, initially it's, they said a hundred million and they've quote lowered it to 92 million, but it's still belting out record numbers. My friend, Bob, Bob and Clark went and Bob <laughs> said he was surrounded by eight year olds, uh, <laughs> that, 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 were, that were just bouncing up and down. Um, my friend Avi took his son mm -hmm. 
who wanted to go, and he said he was like one of five dads that were just standing around going, this is three hours? <laughs> and they went and saw it in a movie theater where you could get alcohol. So that would be the key uh, if you want to go. you got to get drunk. I'll go with you, but I need one. I needs to be a theater with alcohol. Um, and Tay-Tay, uh, the Kelsey, if the football thing, it's out of control. I maybe they like each other. Maybe they don't. I. She's I, wearing his jersey. She's wearing his jersey. You you are one of the the cult. Yeah, I am. She's fine. He's fine. I like Travis. He's people. a wonderful fantasy player. Yes. But I'd like him to focus. I don't need this distraction. His brother Jason's cool. He's too. on. They're all cool. Yeah. But he's on my fantasy team in the children's league, and I'm trying to destroy the children. I need focus here. I don't need him looking up in a box going, is she here? Is she like my mom? Like, no, 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 no. You're a tight end today. That's what you're doing here. You're a tight end playing for Kathleen's fantasy team. I'm telling all my fantasy players they have to take steroids in the one league. They're so bad. They're so bad. Update! This is adorable. Mattress Max donates $50,000 towards Mary Lou Retton's medical cost. You know... I don't know, because then the haters immediately go, why doesn't she have insurance? I don't know, right. but I don't care. And the Bible doesn't say you're supposed to ask those questions. You're just supposed to help if you can. She got divorced in 2018. She's got like four daughters or some shit. Um, they just were trying to raise, they had an amount that was normal. for. She's been in ICU forever with some rare pneumonia, and she's only 55. I'm like, I didn't even know that could happen. I didn't either. No. Huh. Who knew? Nope. Um, but also people forget Okay, so you're an Olympic star. You don't you you only get paid for that in endorsements and ads, and eventually those run out. Uh -huh. And then what are you doing? I think she went on Dancing with the Stars. I'm not sure about that. I think so. Um, he gave her fifty grand, and he didn't even say it. His it was on the pay uh, the the GoFundMe under his wife's name. Um, That's nice. Yeah, and it's going to be way more than they, they're going to need way more than they even asked for. I mean, I see you. I, I know from my parents and all that. Um, uh, she was in there for a week. Um, they didn't go into specifics, but they said it's a day-to-day -day process. It's an infection of both lungs causing the air, so we all know what pneumonia is. Um, they matched the goal with their donation. That was the goal, so they matched it. Oh, cool. And then, yeah. They've been fans of Mary Lou Retton since early in her career. She's always been a shining point of light, as George Bush would say. We pray for Mary Lou's recovery. 50000 is the least we could do to help an American icon get better. We followed her since her career in Houston. My wife, She's a Texan, I guess. Or at least she moved down there for it. My wife had always been a huge supporter of Bella and Mar Marta Caroli's gymnastic team. My son worked out with them on the team for years, as my daughter did as well. So good for him. Um, he also has a bet on the Houston Astros. A big one. Aren't they down already in their series to only Texas? Only by one. Only by one? It's only by one game. Mary Lou Retton was born in Fairmont, West Virginia. She was born in West Virginia? Yeah. Mary Lou Retton? Yeah. Uh-uh. -uh. Yeah. Um, Mattress Mac is eight wins away from another multi-million dollar winner. After they made work of the Twins, um, they so now they're playing the Texans. Yeah, they're down two. Two, I yeah. thought so. Yeah. 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 He's going to win $43 million on $6.9 million in bets. Oh. Well, he's got a ways to go. They better chip, chip her up here. Yeah. Um, the Phillies are dumb. And if you follow this podcast, you know how his things work. And then he, you get free mattresses and stuff. I For that, for that reason, I have no dog in this fight. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't even know anybody who's a Texas Ranger fan. I'm a, I don't – not even Ron. Like, I don't, no. he's Texas, but I don't hear him, I don't ever see him with a George Bush, I know. He's always there. Yeah. Um, but I don't really know, personally, any Astro fans either. This all Texas thing is going to screw up the networks, too. Yeah. Um, Because they're going to be bitching and hollering that there's no other. Matthew McGonagall. Yeah, okay. I always loved Altuve, but then I didn't like the cheating. We don't need to get into all that. Update! <laughs> I like Altuve because he's so short. I'm always rooting for the shorty. Okay. Um, once again, we freed Brittany, and it's not going well. Um, she put another video out today with a knife to her neck. 
She also fled to a private island in French Polynesia following criticism from Dancing with Knives. And that should be a show. Instead of oh. Dancing with the Stars, how about Dancing with Knives? <laughs> After her dad is hospitalized and her sister got cut from Dancing with the Stars. Then she put out the book. Then she says she's had an abortion from Justin Timberlake and this memoir. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think any of this is going to be good for her mental health. I'm going to read it. You're going to read it? Should be a pop -up. Just wait two weeks. It'll be a dollar. It don't should, don't pay. It should be a pop-up book. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why the people in charge of the conservative. I it, it, she's saying that his the conservatorship caused her to go crazy. I'm not sure about all that. You did some crazy things before you were conservative, whatever mm -hmm. that is, whatever you want to call that. Captured. But captured, mm -hmm. imprisoned. Um, but like I always say, I have friends that are way crazier. Yeah. Yeah. I.E. Rick. <laughs> you know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> I don't, I do think there's something mentally wrong with her. But, yes. you know, I'll take you to my lake bar and show you four people that are just as nuts, nutbags. Yeah. Um, right they just don't have any followers. Except <laughs> <laughs> me and the bartender. Right. Um, <laughs> Okay, so remember, now we're moving on. We're moving, this is an update. Update, update, update. The Infinite Blue Diamond, which I said was going to go up, up for auction. Yep. Oh, it fell short what? of its goal. Oh, no. It's gorgeous, too. Um, they got sold at a relative bargain. It was <coughs> estimated to sell between 26 and $37 million at Sotheby's Hong Kong on Thursday, and it only sold for 25 oh. What a steal. What a steal. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? Wow. That's all the updates. That's good, though. Yeah. Um, I had a share update, too. It might be about the Christmas album. I think she's going to make a, a mini tour. <coughs> a mini tour? I think so. I got to look. Well, I'll have to look into that. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about all that. Okay. Um, I'm still in line for a Stevie Barbie. You're in line? Well, I tried to get in a line. I don't know, may not have done it right. Did you click on a link that you weren't supposed to? I did. To? I oh. clicked on a link that <laughs> some of this shit I've bought off Instagram, I'm like, oh, that's not at all what I saw in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to learn. Um, um, don't ever buy Instagram. I don't know why that makes me think of my friend Bob, but they also went to the Sphere <laughs> in Las what? Vegas. And you should go if you're in Vegas. Yeah. yeah, I told my other brother, he, he's going to go with his son. I'm like, go. Even if you don't care about you two. Right, yeah. Like, I could, I'm on the fence about you two. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Would I pay to go if they weren't in the sphere? No. No. Will I pay to go to see them in the sphere and still like it? Yeah. Yeah. But I want to see the inside of the sphere. Okay. Um, Great. This is crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. Not they. He found it. Oh. This is... This is why I believe in Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster and all these things that they that it will one day happen. Okay. Farmer protecting chickens captures creature considered locally extinct for 130 years. What did you just say? Farmer? A farmer. He was trying to oh, protect farmer. his chickens. Something was attacking his chickens. No, the chickens were not protecting the farmer, although I do think they have it within them. Chickens actually have personalities, and people don't really. Yeah. yeah. Um, a farmer in southern Australia captured an animal considered locally extinct for over a century while trying to protect it. Photos show the spotted creature, and it's not tiny. No. Like when people go, well, every new species they find is tiny. And that's exactly how they say it. <laughs> every new species they find is tiny. Not true. This thing's like way bigger than a cat. It's like the size of a, a big raccoon, wow. a very big raccoon. Mm -hmm. Um, Frank Pao Ling Sai, a trout farmer from Beachport, <laughs> South Australia, heard a panic from his chickens and rushed out in the early morning. Inside the coop, he found a spotted creature and a dead chicken. Wow. I had no idea what it was at first. I expected to find a cat, but I found this animal instead. It's, it's like reddish brown. It's got white spots on it. Um, it has a furry brown body, long tail, and a smattering of white spot. It appears angry, and it barred its teeth at the camera. Nah, and it has big teeth. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Uh, he captured the creature in a plastic kitchen, ki chicken cage. Uh -huh. 
He took photos and shared with the hopes of identifying the animals. Oh, wow. The animal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a spotted tail quoll, Q-U-O-L-L. Uh, the National Parks and Wildlife Service of South Australia said. They're about the size of a large cat, um, cat-like shape, but a lot stronger jaws and a longer canine teeth. Wow. It's also known as the tiger quoll, an endangered quoll species that uh, the largest native carnivore left on the Australian mainland. Um, the last official documented sighting was in the 1880s. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's wow. been considered extinct for 130 years. If there's one, there's more. Yeah. I mean, he can't be alone. You just got to find him. Right. Well, are they hiding really good? Put a tracker on him. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event. It's amazing. We have. We thought uh, something was extinct, and it turns up at our back door. That's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the coal, he originally... Captured, managed to escape out of a damaged corner of the cage. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's it's awesome. This is when people say, oh, it doesn't exist. Oh, you don't know. Right. You don't know. One of these trail camps. Oh, well, 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 we're going to talk about that right now. Okay. Holy shit, they found it. Yeah. Let's talk about that Bigfoot video, shall we? Mm-hmm. Colorado. So there's a train deal like they have in Canada mm-hmm. when you go through the Rockies. Yeah. Um, this is in... Durango. I've done a show in Durango. I drove from somewhere to Durango with another comic, and it was the most terrifying drive of my life, and I don't even think that road should ever be open. Really? And that, yeah, and then he started crying. I, I'm, he's driving. I'm, I'm like, oh, no. You <laughs> are the opening act. You don't get to cry. Right. I cry. <laughs> no. The headliner gets to cry. You don't get to cry. No. But then I was terrified because he's really a good driver, and he was a, a, it was terrifying. But I did love Durango once I got there. There's a hotel there called the Strader, Strader, I don't know how they pronounce it. Strader. Strader Hotel. Yep. And it's like the old Western, like you could just see Billy the Kid coming in. Yeah. And it's preserved perfectly. Mm-hmm. It's the rooms are, you know. Yeah. yeah. But you're there for you're there for the atmosphere. Yeah, it's like 1880. You're yeah. there for the atmosphere. Uh-huh. So if you haven't seen the video, which would be very hard not to do, because even if you don't care about Bigfoot, this thing went v- viral. A Sunday train ride through the San Juan Mountains on the way to Durango from Silverton when Stetson saw what he thought could be a Bigfoot. We were looking for elk in the mountains, and my husband sees something moving. He can't explain it. So he's like, Bigfoot. It was at least six, seven feet or taller. It matched the sage in the mountains so much that it's like he's camouflaged when crouching down. He was like a brown, a sage brown color. Uh, they scrambled to take a photo of the beast while a man sitting next to Setson took a video of the creature that has now gone viral on social media. Y'all, hundreds of people on the train, three or four of us actually saw the ever-elusive creature Bigfoot. I don't know about y'all, but we believe. Um, theories about who or what was behind Sunday's sighting have gained traction online, including Reddit, where users speculated that someone from Silverton-based RV company, Sasquatch Expedition Campers, could be involved. Wow. When reached by phone... Um, they, they denied that, um, we, the Sasquatch feel, feel compelled to address recent allegations and rumors that have been circulated, suggesting our involvement in the train setting. We want to make it, make it unequivocally clear. It wasn't us. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, now here's my, here's my thing. Um, there have been, uh, between Durango and Silverton, there have been four Sasquatch reports since 1989. Wow. The most recent sighting in the area was 2008 when a hiker outside Durango spotted a large hairy figure while on Crater Lake Trail. Here's the thing. Most of the Bigfoot videos, it's a bunch of, like, a few friends out in the woods, and then you always think, oh, they had another friend dress up like Bigfoot, and then you filmed it. What? Why would someone, unless the people on the train... We're in partnership with this fake person that's going to do the Bigfoot thing and said, yeah. right at this time, you got to pop out, out like and run here. down the thing, and then we hope for our video to go viral, and then we hope to make money on the video. Mm-hmm. Seems like a lot of work to make. If, on YouTube, it, you need like a bazillion views to make a hundred bucks. Yeah. It's just not, it's not a profitable thing. Um, so what would be the motivation other than a couple hundred bucks? Right. And the Sasquatch outfit. If it is in a costume, would have cost a thousand. Yeah. Will you even make your money back? Probably not. Right. I tend to think it was real, but 
I don't know. I think it is too. I look at the comments and most people are like, oh, yeah, dude, what a great costume. <laughs> you know, everybody's like a naysayer. Why couldn't it be? Because everybody knows he's a Canadian. Everybody, everybody <laughs> does know <laughs> that the larger Sasquatch tribes are in Canada. <laughs> the larger... The larger families, but maybe this is a Bigfoot who left that family and said, you know what? A rogue Bigfoot. Bullshit. He's a rogue Bigfoot and said, I'm out of here. You bastards are mean to me at Thanksgiving. You're mean to me at Christmas. I, I don't, you don't make me feel good. I'm leaving. Maybe he just left. You don't know what goes on. True. Behind closed doors. What do you termites think? Do you believe it? Do you not believe it? I believe it. Do you think I'm crazy? Why couldn't he be in Colorado? Yeah. Holy shit, they This is amazing. Okay. A 1981 DeLorean made famous in Back to the Future has been found in a Wisconsin barn with fewer than a thousand miles on it. Oh. The one from the movie. Are you kidding? No. In Wisconsin? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well. The owner said he rarely drove it, but he would just come outside and just, quote, look at it. That's a very Wisconsin statement. Very. <laughs> No, I just go out and look at it every now and then. <laughs> oh, God. Um, an original 1981 DeLorean has made, made its way back to the future after an Illinois car restoration company heard about the car that was stowed away in a barn in Wisconsin. The iconic 80s vehicle made famous after the same model. Oh, it's not the exact one from the movie, but it's a, still a 1981 perfectly intact DeLorean. And if you oh. watch that movie about him and how they screwed him, yep. yeah. You do wonder about what's really going on. Uh, It's been sitting in a barn in Waukesha County for 40 years, going untouched and undriven. The car only had 977 miles on it. The nephew of the car's original owner living in New Mexico reached out uh, to Michael so-and-so, owner of the restoration company, uh, DeLorean Midwest, and told him they were looking to sell the car. It happened pretty quick because once I found the car was close and it had low mileage, so I was excited to take a look. When they opened the barn door and saw a mouse run across the car's center console, he said that the car had the same charm it did in the 80s. Condition of the leather, the condition of the instruments, cluster in the dash, and places where you see sun damage. That's one of the big killers on this. This car had no sun damage. He said he would go out to the barn just to look at it because he thought it was a really cool car. Oh. Yeah, it's probably a youngster doesn't even know what you're looking at. Like, holy shit, dude. Um... The 90-year-old car owner said the car had not been moved for five years. It, but uh, Mike, the guy from the car restoration, said it didn't look like it had been moved for 20 years. The DeLorean is thought to be the lowest mileage version of the car discovered in recent years. Cool. That's mm-hmm. awesome. The engine no longer runs. A thick layer of dust covered the exterior, and a rat infestation has led to the interior smell. Oh. Yeah. The engine doesn't work probably because if it's... People don't know this, but there's a real thing such as pack rats. I thought that was a term. And then my dad was finding out at the farm these piles of silver, whether it was wires or anything silver, would be in a pile. Mm -hmm. And he went up to the the feed store and said, I don't, they were taking apart the four wheelers from the inside Mm -hmm. and gathering, they like silver things and they make piles, like nests of silver Mm -hmm. nails. They like anything silver. So if there's, if those are pack rats, they probably ruin the whole engine. Probably. There's a video of the vehicle. Oh, I'm going to go see it. It's on YouTube. It has 50,000 views. Put we'll put it in the schnotes. Yeah. I'll put it in the schnotes, termite. Cool. Z. Termite z. Um, <laughs> moving on to news. <laughs> this, this, I don't know why this makes me laugh. Cartel murders his own boss by mistake. Hitman then turns his gun on himself. Yeah, oh. that's exactly what you should do. <laughs> The elusive L-22, a drug boss from the Sinola, uh, Sinaloa, I always say that wrong, Sinaloa, not Sinola, Sinaloa cartel was reportedly shot dead by his own foot soldiers after they mistook him for a hitman from a rival gang. Wow. <laughs> gunman loyalist, gunman loyal to Los Chapitos, the son of infamous drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, are thought to have been at the hospital guarding another man who was receiving treatment. A gunfight broke out when another armed man showed up, and according to El Blog de Narco, the man was the elusive L-22 and thought to have been the gangster responsible for running the cartel's operation in Sinaloa. Wow. Can you imagine? No. That's the thing about knowing not knowing the boss. Right. 
well, that's a good excuse if you're the guy who shot him. Yeah. How am I supposed to know? I never met the guy. You won't let us talk to him? We don't FaceTime? No, don't. You don't text? You don't send me a headshot? <laughs> Four people died in the gunfight. Wow. And then the guy killed himself. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of the hitmen who killed his own boss required medical attention when the fighting came to an end. He reported he used the gun on himself after realizing his fatal mistake choosing to take his own life rather than face whatever gruesome punishment the cartel would have had in store. Wow. I would have too. Yeah. Like, I don't need hippos eating me apart. I, like, I don't, <laughs> no, whatever no. you all have planned, I'm sure is horrific. No. And this will take one second. Yep. I'm out. Yeah. Um, here's, a, here's another crazy art museum thing. Yeah. I don't understand what is happening in our an American citizen was detained by security forces in the museum after being observed shattering statues uh, ah. that he claimed were in violation of the Torah. What? A tor- yep. He just knocked them over and ruined them. Oh Why are they not behind glass? Right. A tourist in his mid forties was arrested. Re- I don't know what How the security is doing. Statues? I don't know. Ancient Roman statues at the displayed at the Israeli Museum in Jerusalem. It was a tourist in his mid forties. He intentionally enjoyed them for being blasphemous. Okay. It's an American. He was detained. Um, the minimum, uh, according to the museum, the suspect caused damage to two ancient Roman, uh, two of them that were placed on display in the archaeological department's permanent uh, exhibition. Yeah, they're shattered. They're, I mean, shattered. Wow. Like, there's not enough Gorilla Glue to fix this shit. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> yeah, he was taken into the suspect. You know, lucky for this guy, uh-huh. there's a lot of other shit going on in Israel right now. They might just let him go. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're kind of busy. Right. Um, but what about that guy who wrecked uh, anybody? <laughs> the statue deal? Anybody? Okay. I'll, I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. We're I good. got it. We're good. Yeah. I got it. Oh, news that is crazy. Everyone knows how much I like Bucky's. It's a lifestyle. My friend Tom Papa, by the way, uh-huh. fellow comedian, very funny. Mm-hmm. He's got a special on something right now. Netflix. Is it on Netflix? I never get confused. No. By the way, also on Amazon, I know I'm jumping around a lot. Uh-huh. The cold medicine is really kicking in with my whiskey and a beer. Um I watched on Amazon, it's a treadmill show, I would say. I call them treadmill shows when, you know, it's fine. You gotta kind of it. Well, it's called I Don't Like Mondays. And I had to inform Paddles about oh, this because yeah. Paddles is Canadian. But in 1979, it was the first school shooting ever. Mm-hmm. And it was a girl. And she was only 16. Her name was Becky. And she had fire red, orange hair, and crazy glasses. But they weren't crazy for the time. Mm-hmm. She had a 22 rifle, and she shot. She killed two people. And, uh injured a lot she shot from across the street the school was across the street she went out in her front yard and just started shooting up the school mm-hmm. and when the cops she laid down the gun eventually and the cops got her mm-hmm. and they asked why did you do this and she said i don't like mondays oh my god creepy, creepy. but anyway she's up for parole she was sentenced to 25 years of life so i don't know how old she is now but i watched the whole thing i'm not going to tell you if she got paroled or not but if you're bored put it in the notes well, we'll put the show in the notes, and you can right. go watch it on Amazon Prime. Wow. Anyway, so Tom Papa. What else can you watch on Amazon Prime? What else on Amazon Prime? You go watch my special, Hunting Bigfoot. Yes. I was like, I don't know. I don't think there's been anything good released what? lately. <laughs> Mine hangs around in the top ten, though. Yeah. I check it every now and then okay. just to see how far it's dropped. Over time, everything drops. But So if you turn around, could go on there and give it a five star, give it a star rating. or yeah. rating. The the children pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> I'm like, who does that? Like, I've never rated anything, but now that I know if I I like it and I want more of it, like they canceled. It was something I really liked, and they never did any more seasons of it. And I'm like, damn it, I should have rated it. I guess I don't know. I can't think of what it was. It was a really good series, well, well, but the Gilded Age is coming back on. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Very excited. Christina yeah. Bransky is awesome in it. So is uh, Cynthia Nixon. Mm-hmm. So is the lady who plays the the wannabe rich person. Okay. Anyway, as you know, Buck, I find Bucky's to be a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. My friend Tom called me. Uh, he was somewhere on the East Coast, like Durham, I think, going to Durham. He was on the highway mm-hmm. to tell me that he was going to his first Bucky's ever. Oh, yeah, but awesome. then his cousin, mm-hmm. who's super fun, yep. uh, and her friend came to the show and came backstage. 
And they told me that he freaked out and ran away. What? It was too crowded. Oh. But I told him, yes. do not let the crowd off Just foot you. you. No. They, no, you will be checked no. out in five minutes no matter what. Right. Greatest bathrooms in the world. Get a brisket. It, mm -hmm. Nothing takes long. Nope. Even though there's billions of people in there. It runs like clockwork. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Bucky's. Uh-oh. Well, yeah, I don't like to report these things, but... <laughs> It doesn't have anything to do with the store. Let's oh, say that. Or they get rid of the front here. Bucky's co-founder Donald Wasik's son Mitchell is forced to move out of posh Dallas rental after being charged with secretly recording guests undressing and having sex. What? He had a lake house, and he put cameras everywhere. This is like Chuck Berry weird. Oh wow. Yeah. Why do you? I never understand why someone Chuck Berry got busted out and. <laughs> St. Louis yeah. out in the burbs. He, he, had, bird. he was a little bit of a dirty yeah. bird. Yeah, yeah, but why do you want to watch, especially in women's bathroom? If you have a camera, yeah. you're not going to see anything no. that's exciting. The most you're going to see is my totally white Irish ass, mm -hmm. and you're going to watch me sit down. What? Yeah. I don't get it. We don't have to go past that. No. No. Um, he's going to be arrested. I, he may have already been. I don't know. Oh, he was arrested, yeah. And on 28 charges of invasive visual recordings after witness discovered he used a spy camera to record them and using toilets, showering, changing clothes, and or having sex. Wow. wow. You want to see me change clothes? Do you know how many times I fall while I'm changing my clothes? <laughs> There's probably so much laughing because I'm always in a hurry and I'm yeah. like, well, I'll get my tennis shoe through that hole. No, no you won't, Kathleen. No, won't. And then I fall <laughs> over on my ass and then baby cat just goes, meow, 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 like terrified that... The feeder might be down. <laughs> um, he's already been, he was released on two, uh, $280,000 bond. I don't know how much trouble you get in for this. Some guy found one of the camera holes and then kept digging and was like, holy crap. Wow. Yeah, a lake, a lake house is so crazy. Like, yeah. what are people doing? Here's a little something. I don't know how this is going to, speaking of Netflix and Amazon, because I have a special on Netflix too. Look at me being all over the map. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Netflix plans to open brick and mortar locations. What? You heard me. Brick and mortar. They Do got you, rid of the boxes. They just quit sending out DVDs. I mean, yeah. come on. Who was still doing that? Well, Not everybody's as lucky as me to have a CD player in their car. <laughs> I don't know who's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, yeah. The public cannot ordinarily visit Netflix headquarters in Los Gatos, California. Here's what's crazy about Netflix. Okay. I did a special with them. Mm -hmm. I've never met anyone that worked there. Nope. I've never spoken to anyone. Mm -hmm. Never emailed. Okay. Now, Amazon, much different. Amazon, highly involved. Mm -hmm. And I had to deal with all the children. And most of the... You got to deal with all the children. What? You got to deal with all the children. I got to deal with all the children. 90% yeah, okay. of the children on it. Um, super fun. There was one. I will never forget his name. His name was Nate. I won't say his last name. But if I ever meet Nate in a bar, something bad's going to happen. Okay. Let's put it that way. Sure. Now, Netflix, it was just very different how they operate. Netflix basically says, send us your special, uh -huh. and then they post it. Great. Like on a, they just post it. Like, yeah, yeah I'll throw it up there. And they do it. Wow. Which is, on some ways, good. Some ways, it'd be better if they were a little more involved in helping out yeah. and then amazon's the opposite mm -hmm. they want to go over the jokes and sometimes that can get a little um weird, uh, weird. Mm -hmm. um sometimes um infuriating let's just throw that out there <laughs> oh really so and so doesn't <laughs> like that joke guess how much i give a shit don't even get me started but they're i appreciated their involvement because yeah. they really cared, and they posted stuff. You just got to get through the complaints in the beginning, and then it's fine. Yeah. But I always used to joke, I don't know where Netflix is. Right. And I have a special on their network. Mm -hmm. Two, I think. I don't know where the other one is. The others are wherever. They just keep getting this old. I don't know where they live. <sighs> anyway, now, I didn't know their headquarters was in Los Gatos. I don't think you need to. Well, I guess they, they don't even care that the people that are on their streaming service know where they're at. <laughs> They're hiding. Los Gatos <laughs> is hiding. Let's just admit that, Netflix. You're hiding. Because it ain't cheap up there either. No. That's up by Santa Barbara, I believe. 
Netflix recently shuttered the long-standing mail-order DVD services, led to the closure of video stores around the world, and ushered in the era of streaming. But now the company appears to be embracing brick and mortar. Oh. According to Bloomberg Report, quoting Josh Simon, the company's vice president of consumer products, Netflix aims to open a network of stores offering retail, dining, and live entertainment that leverages its TV shows and movies. Wow. That could work. Yeah, but you get it at home. No, you're going to say, let's go eat at Netflix. And we're going to go eat, and then they're going to have, um, like, a retail store offshore on movies you can buy or whatever. But then, like, the Discovery Channel one time in New York... Or no, History Channel, when Vikings was on, yep. my favorite show probably of all time, uh-huh. um, they had a Viking uh, uh, exhibit. exhibit in New York mm-hmm. at the Discovery Channel at the Discovery Channel Museum, which sadly is closed, by the way. Oh, when I went to New York, I know that's I wanted to see what was there, and it was yeah. closed. Yeah, I think it's closed permanently. Um, so maybe if Netflix has a show, they could put all the stuff in there. When they're going to have live entertainment... So maybe, like, I have a special on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Maybe I come in and do 15 minutes every night that week. Yeah. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I think it could work. Okay. And I'm not usually positive about these ideas out of the gate. No. 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 I'm usually like, wah, wah. Very naysayer. Not a naysayer. I just think people have these crazy ideas that cost a lot of money, and then they don't pan out. Right. They, They, Netflix has not announced what it will be selling at the location, it's unclear if it's DVDs or any physical media that would be part of the inventory. Maybe they're using it as a giant like yard sale to get rid of all the DVDs they have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot I could take with me. Not of Bothering Jesus. Not of the one on their thing. They didn't make that a DVD. But my old DVDs, I have a shit ton. Mm-hmm. If anybody wants one, hit me up. Hit me up. I know, I don't know what to do with them. Um, the street streamer plans to open the first of these two Netflix house locations in unannounced cities in 2025. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's coming. Mm-hmm. Though Disney, a major Netflix comp- competitor, has been in retail dining and live experience for I- I- entertainment spaces for decades, such offerings have not been part of Netflix's core brand. <laughs> I don't know. Earlier this year, the streamer opened a pop-up restaurant in Los Angeles featuring menu items created by chefs associated with Netflix cooking shows. All right. Yeah. That's a good idea. They've also often uh, offered up uh, pop-up stores offering merchandise from hit shows like Stranger Things in cities as Paris, Vegas, and Chicago. Uh Uh-oh. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I think it could work. Okay. And then Amazon will have to do it. They yeah. have a lot more shit going on. You think they have a lot more shit going on and don't have to do that? Yeah. Well, they don't have to, but they can make money probably. Maybe. Yeah. For my new special, I will come down. You can have a meet and greet with the live people you see on Netflix. Oh. Huh? Huh? Oh. Get your picture made? Get your picture made? <laughs> One dollar. One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people go, do you do meet and greets, paid meet and greets? No, I feel would feel terrible taking money from people mm-hmm. to meet me. If you want to meet me and you know my habits, you'll find me. Two termites, <laughs> two termites found me in the bar in Kansas City after the show and came up and they had pub cat shirts on. And I'm like, you guys want a picture? And they were like, yeah. And then they had two red beers and he, they were like, do you want one? I'm like, I just sadly got a glass of wine, but that looks better. But I didn't want to take her beer. So I didn't, I'm like, no, I'm good. I won't do it. Um, all right. This is crazy because I'm obsessed with art sales and shit. A painting valued at fifteen thousand dollars turned out to be a Rembrandt. What? What? It could now sell for eighteen million. Oh my god! Yep, it was found just two. It was valued just two years ago. It's now expected to fetch up to eighteen million dollars at auction. Uh, the Adoration of Kings has been virtually underseen, unseen since the fifties when it came to light. It was acquired by collector so and so in nineteen fifty five. His widow sold it to a German family in 1985 where it remained until it was sold by Christie's in Amsterdam two years ago. At the time of the sale, Christie's attributed the biblical scene uh, to the circle of Rembrandt, suggesting it had been carried out by a student or an artist close to the famous painter and estimated between 10 and 15 grand. Wow. The monochromatic painting, which measures blah, blah, it doesn't matter. Although that was 50 times more than the pa- paintings, uh, it was it was... Sorry, it was purchased by an anonymous buyer back then for nine hundred eight thousand. Oh wow! 
Wow. Well, maybe that person knew. Maybe that, yeah. 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 Um, it's a lot of money for a donor. The vast majority of Rembrandt's work hang in museums around the world, and almost all of those have come to auction over the past three decades. The uh, Adoration of Kings, which it, depict, it depicts the encounter between the three wise men and the baby Jesus, is a fantastic opportunity. They examined it all. An anonymous buyer consigned it to Sotheby's as the auction house uh, with an 18-month research project to arrive at the painting's true attribution and value. He, Rembrandt did it around the year 1628, which would wow. have been 22 years and uh, living in the Dutch city of Leiden. So do you want to go buy a Rembrandt? He can. It's currently on show at the Sotheby's in Hong Kong, which it will travel. After which it will travel to New York, Los Angeles, and London. Will be auctioned on December tw- on December sixth. Wow. See, I think those things should go straight to museum. Right. I don't think private people should get to do that. No. Museums can bid. Mm-hmm. Who's ever got the most cashola? Yep. Who's doing the best fundraising? Do you want to buy three Scottish islands? No. I would. I don't find the Scots to be fun. Oh, you can't say all Scots aren't fun. Many are. The Irish are more fun. Way better. That's <coughs> why so dad will go, what do you expect? They're just frozen British people. <laughs> I'm like, dad, when was the last time you were in Scotland? I had a super fun time. But, um, three Scottish islands that come with an additional 19th century three-bedroom home could be yours for $1.5 million. The first time... The island has been on sale in 85 years. The stone farmhouse on the Torsa Island, Inner Hebrides, Hebride, Scotland, is surrounded by land used for uh, sheep and cattle. It's regularly visited by a vast variety of wildlife. With the closest town 18 miles to the northwest, the Slate Roof Farmhouse occupies a shared shelter spot looking southeast over the mouth of Loch Melfort. The house includes a, bo- a boot room. Boot room. Yeah. Um, a shower room, kitchen and dining, kitchen and dining room, and a sitting room. The farmhouse accompanies islands that could be perfect for those who want a digital detox. There's no Wi-Fi. You can only access to 4G broadband. Huh. That wouldn't mean anything to me, so I wouldn't care. Situated 180 miles away from Glasgow, the two-story property offers complete tranquility and privacy to the buyer. Oh. Imagine how quiet it would be in the winter. I think it would be awesome. Creepy, though. Well, I went to the Aran Islands once. It was creepy. Awesome it's, creepy. There's people there. There are people there. And yeah, bars. not many. There's, yeah, there's there. no cars. You don't hear any noises. Well, it's creepy. Fun. It's like time traveling backwards. Um, it has private water, main t- mains, mains, electricity. I don't know what, I guess, mains. Private drainage to a septic tank and electric heating. Well, oh. electric heat. Um, it's permanent grazing. Just be me. Uh, it has a sheep flock of a hun- uh, of a hundred managed by con- contracted shepherds, or I go get sheep dogs. Right. It's regularly visited by sea eagles, other raptors, and the resident blue hare. Oh, there's hares out there. Roe deer, otters, and diverse wildlife typical of the West Coast. Stunning views. Um, you can also go wild bird hunting, duck and goose, if that's your thing. No. No? You're no. not interested? Not really. I would be interested. I'd rather have a pub. A pub? Yeah. yeah. I always think I like the quiet, and then I miss people as much as sometimes <laughs> people could get on your nerves. Yeah. You like the quiet for an hour. It was, it, the whole island was inhabited by resident farmers till the 1960s. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I'm a loner enough. No. But it'd be fun to have to visit. <laughs> if you were super rich, like if I was Jeff Bezos, that's the kind of shit I would buy. To, you can actually time travel and know what it's like at night to not have cars and noises. And yeah. it's like a whole different, it's the way the world used to be mm-hmm. way back then. That's what I would buy instead of the shit these people buy, these $20 billion yachts. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. This is good news. A penguin colony, a penguin colony eaten to extinction by foxes returned after 30 years. Yay, little penguins. Yay, little penguins. Yay, little penguins. Um, it's been reestablished after 30 years as a brand new chick hatch for the first time since 1993. Wow. Yep. Uh, 
They're in the Australian state of New South Wales. Cool. After breeding turn returned to the area after decades of the species being decimated by pre- predators such as foxes and dogs. They're so cute. They're very cute. Yeah. Uh, the chick was the first to hatch in New South Wales outside of Sydney for 30 years. Little penguins, they're little ones. The smallest of all penguin species are a common breeding seabird along the southern coast of Australia and the, also the South Island of New Zealand. They're back. Is a little penguin like a little person? Like a tiny version? Is a little penguin like a little bo- Well, in the picture, yeah. Huh. Just a tiny person. Cool. Like a tiny penguin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, they're back. Cool. Good news. This is something I totally would have done. A UK university will offer, will, will uh, confer a new title. You can get a master's degree in the occult. Now, see, I would love it, but then I'd also wonder, as a Catholic, am I opening the portal yes. by studying? Well, not if I'm not participating. I'm just studying it. Okay. In the ancient city of Exeter, three women were hanged for practicing witchcraft in the late 17th century, the last of such executions in England. Now, a merely short walk from where the hangings occur, the University of Exeter will offer a postgraduate degree in magic and okay. occult science which the school says is the first of its kind at a British university. Wow. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's, it, they've, it was born out of the recent surge in history in interest in the history of witchcraft. And uh, hello, Harry Potter. Who are we kidding? <laughs> hello. I was going to say. Yeah. And a desire to create a space where research on magic could be studied from across academic fields. <laughs> Coursework will include, here you go, paddles. Okay. The study of Western dragons in lore, literature, and art. Oh, wonderful. You love dragons. Yes, I love dragons. Um, the depiction of women in the Middle Ages, the practice of deception and illusion, the philosophy of psychedelic psychedelics through lenses of Jewish, Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions. Lectures will explore how magic has influenced society. Very cool. I'm sure Rasputin will come up. <laughs> uh, I would love it. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you want to major in that? Um, you can. I think this is all Harry Potter born. They could say otherwise, but who are we kidding here? Um, yeah, the witchcraft, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think studying it will open the portal. No. No, but I've seen the exorcist, so I don't want to even have an Ouija board. No, you can't. No. All right, termites. We're wrapping it up here. I'm going to tell you a sweet story. Gatorland shirt. This is my Gatorland sweatshirt. I know. Great. Yeah. yeah. I'll be going to the villages and don't think I won't be going to Gatorland. Boom. Boom. Yes, I will. Um, This is sad, okay. but it just shows you monkeys have a soul. What? Yeah. Okay. They're like dogs. A grieving monkey traveled 25 miles to the funeral of a man who fed him and cries beside his body. Oh, we got to end on this. No. Well, I'm going to tell you about it. too sad. A heartbreaking video has filmed the monkey mourning at the funeral of a man who fed him for months following the, after following the body 25 miles to be here. Okay. The tear-jerking footage reportedly shows a monkey grieving at the loss of the man he had formed a bond with over the last few months. Local media said in the city of something India, they've reported that the de- deceased man, so I can't say it, something sing, uh, has been feeding the monkey for the last few months of his life. Uh, the monkey apparently traveled 25 miles with the man's body and his family to attend his funeral services. Oh. Yeah, he was clinging to the tight yellow mortuary sheet covering his body as they traveled down a windy motorway on, on top of the vehicle. And there's a little picture of him sitting right there bawling his eyes out. Oh, that's awesome. But now, see, Lewis made me watch that movie um, about the monkey that went bad. Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know, are monkeys, can you trust them? Are they manipulative? They're manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't need another uh, manipulative, ma- manipulative force and when you're dealing with all the... You know, yeah. yeah, there's enough work people and shit doing shit. Um, the monkey cried, and he stayed next to the body during all the rituals and procedure procedures. Wow. Well, it just shows you. Be nice to a monkey, he'll be nice to you. Be mean to the monkey, and he'll, scra- he'll tear your eyes out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Monkey shines. Go watch it. Let me see yeah. if I have anything fun. Yeah, there's got to be something fun. Um, That's terrible. <laughs> wow, you're cold, Uh, uh
Well, this, if you've seen my act lately, you know, my, I have jokes about Spirit Airlines. Yep. A seemingly half-naked woman strolls through the Florida airport. That ain't right. <laughs> and people don't know, this lady had no pants on. What? At all. Now, it could have been those flesh tone deals. Um, passengers waiting in line for Florida were stunned when the woman appeared to be naked from the waist down. A now, now viral video posted to Reddit Thursday shows the obvious, seemingly oblivious woman standing in line. It's spirit. Come on. Come on. Wearing an orange halter neck dress that appeared to have been hiked up, exposing her lower butt cheeks. She had one, plans, uh, one hand placed on her suitcase and one stared straight ahead. Only in the fucking airport spirit, spirit airlines, a fellow passenger filming the woman could be heard saying, <laughs> and then somebody said, motherfucker, what is going on in 2023? <laughs> the camera woman decided to pray. Lord, give me strength. I say no drawers, no fucking drawers. Y'all, what is that? No drawers. <laughs> no pants. <laughs> she said, hold on. Um, then she goes, I wonder if spirit is going to let this happen today. Spirit, you're going to let this happen? This ain't right. The woman continues to film. Wow. As the passenger moves up in line and out of her direct view, obscured by the man, by, obscured by the man behind is looking down his phone. The vid- video is captioned, when you pack extra light. It's unclear when the incident took place. It was at Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International Airport. Of course and, it yeah. was. <laughs> it's one of those situations where you're on the way of the airport and you just got that feeling you forgot something before you left. One user read it, joked. Did I lock the door? Did I turn off the lights? Pants! I forgot my pants! <laughs> <laughs> Laugh all you wet, won't, won't, but I bet she won't be subjected to a TSA pat-down, a third woman suggested. Wow. That the woman may have mental health issues. A person who thinks it's okay to do this is mentally unstable. Yeah, if she didn't have pants on, you can't let her on the plane. No! No, you just no. can't do that. Um, some people said she was wearing leggings close to her own skin color. It has to be skin-colored leggings. It's a tiny bit darker halfway up the thigh. I think it probably was, but it probably looked like a Kanye West's wife has shown up in things where you think she's naked yeah. and it's not. No. Yeah, no. I don't know that this person flying spirit would have the money that Kanye would have to right. get that kind of thing but going, but all right. So we're not doing lyrics anymore. We're not doing lyrics anymore because it, I kind of ran out of st- crazy stuff. It ran its course. So somebody sent me, and I feel terrible, these two little books, Taylor and Dolly. Cool. And they were in a plastic bag, and it all got confused backstage. So whoever sent these, sh- shout me out your name, and I'll shout you out. Yeah. Um, if you can't, just Instagram or whatever. So we're going to close on a Dolly quote and a Tay-Tay quote. Nice! Yep, and there's a lot of them. I'm going to randomly open Tay-Tays. Okay. Let's just go right here. Oh. <laughs> it says, oh, okay. this is a Tay-Tay. This is from Twitter. These are unauthorized, by the way, but they do say where they were. Okay. This was on Twitter. Pseudo authorized. In 20, in 2012. Okay. We should love, not fall in love, because everything that falls gets broken. Whoa. Oh, sad. Sad timing for that quote. <laughs> what was happening in 2012? <laughs> These are words to shake it off. Dolly's is, it's a hard to be a diamond in a round stone world. <laughs> All right, Dolly. Um, my nails are my rhythm section when I'm writing a song all alone. Someday I may cut an album, just me and my fingernails. It would go platinum. Yep. <laughs> this was discussing her songwriting in an interview with Roger Ebert. Well, so there you go, termites. No, but I'm also going to say we released all the dates, and then I didn't do a podcast that week because I was at dinner at 4:30 with my parents. Right. Yeah. Fried chicken night. At the <clears throat> Fried chicken night at the Willows. They have white gravy too. It's hard to come by anymore. They have yeah. brown gravy too, but good. white gravy is elusive. Mm. Very good. Upcoming shows. Where am I going this week? Virginia Beach, Virginia, Washington D.C. With who? I'm bringing my friend Kelly McFarland. Nice. Super duper funny. Fort Worth, Houston. I love Fort Worth. Well, I love Houston too, but I haven't been to Fort Worth in eons. Yeah. I'm very excited to go um, to the stockyards. I like to see that. They have a cattle drive every day at 1130. The Texas fun. Longhorn uh, cattle you come to. You gotta send us a video. It's so great. Then St. Louis. Then Denver. Then the Villages. We added second show. There's now a show on Saturday. 
Eugene, Portland, Seattle. Some of the newer dates for the winter. 2024. Well, they, 2024. Every, they, the agency calls it the spring tours. I'm like, it's still winter, guys. <laughs> I don't know why we can't call it the winter one. Right. Um, uh, Wichita, January 12th. January 13th, Tulsa. January 19th, Santa Rosa. Those are makeup shows when my dad um, got sick. I had yeah. to go home. Santa Rosa and Wheatland are makeup shows. So if you had tickets, they are valid again. Yep. Uh, but call the venue, call the, go on their website, make sure, triple sure, because yep. I'm not really totally in charge about that. And then January 26th and 27th, San Luis Abismo. Nice. Wow. And Monterey, California. <laughs> where I will go walk on the beach, which is a dog-friendly beach, and it's the happiest beach on earth. Nice. Carmel Very Beach. Very cool. I think it's called the Carmel Beach. Um, all right, termites. You be fall termites. Get your fantasy teams in line if you need to. My teams, I'm dominating the Children's League. Don't want to brag. <laughs> Completely nice. eating it in the adult expensive league. And then in the medium What's league. The expensive league? The expensive league is with my older nephews. Uh -huh. um, Who have jobs. <laughs> they have jobs, and, and they sh they shit talk constantly. It's very funny. Um and then the medium league is comedians and my friend Kathy and Lewis and Lewis is eat, eating just eating it and, and Paddles. Paddles is in that one. Yeah. I'm in uh Paddles is in first, I'm in second. Wow. Yeah. So, but I don't know how anyone's managing anything cuz everyone's getting hurt. Yeah, it's really And I don't know if it's the turf. I don't know if it's that there's 350 pounds men that can now run the speed of light because of whatever but I remember, like, when I was a kid, if you see the pictures of who were quarterbacks then, they yeah. look like what fans look like now. <laughs> kind of chubby, um, kind of in shape, maybe. <laughs> They're smoking in the locker room at halftime. I mean, those, but those guys never, Joe Namath wasn't hurt permanently. Jim Hart, like, the Cardinal quarterback, it just didn't, they didn't get injured like they get injured now. I feel like every week, we're watching people get in an ambulance. Yeah. Not, the ambulance is coming out. Not just like, oh, he hobbled over to the side. These things are, people are out for the seasons. I mean, I don't know. Is it the turf? Is it uh, the grass that's not right? I don't have any idea, but it's not going well. And then I wake up and I'm all mad about my fantasy team. And I think, what is a real coach doing? Right. They're probably like, God damn it. You know, mm -hmm. now I'm going to lose my job. Yeah. Like, and there's going to be heads that are going to roll for it. Um, so, I don't know. Termites, what is the cause of all these severe injuries? Not just, like, tiny things. I'll take another shot of my whiskey and let you guys answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, everybody. Christian McCaffrey's out. Um, McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. I always call him McCaffrey. You make, uh, you make him Irish. I make everybody Irish McCaffrey. if possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's how it's going. I guess I'll root for the Astros for in, for on behalf of Mattress Mac. Okay. He's a wonderful person. He's a wonderful man. And he, if he wins, the whole city wins. Yeah, everybody gets mattresses. Yeah. So fun. I mean, give me a reason to root for somebody else, and I will. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's it. Go be fall termites. Enjoy fall. Yeah. It's very nice. It got cold there for a little bit. A little too cold too quickly. Well, fall golf. But back, yeah, fall golf. Yeah. Fall fishing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good times. You ready?